Oh, that's all good. Like he, I guess he's still there. Austin. Okay. Yeah. We'll pretend like he is. Um, okay. Hi everybody. I am really excited about today's episode. This is one of my really, really good friends. Um, in still a fairly short period of time, but feels like our whole lives at this point. So, um, I met Barb, um, before the Miss Wheelchair America competition for 2019. And she was Miss Wheelchair Pennsylvania and I was Miss Wheelchair Louisiana. Um, we got into the lobby and ran into each other right away. And um, pretty much she was giving me tape to like for my dress. Um, you know, something was like gapping. And she, I remember we had, we had met, we hit it off. And then I was going out of the hotel and I hear her like yelling my name. She's like rolling after me and like brings me this um, double-sided like wardrobe tape. And um, anyway, we've been really, really good friends ever since then. So um, she, and she's had an amazing like advocacy journey and Barbara, I kind of want you to, I, I, I think it would be interesting for you to start off telling like how much you struggled in the beginning, adjusting. You had a lot more than just your, just, just your disability happened in a short period of time and you were struggling and then just how you discovered the program and all of the amazing things that have happened since. And then we do have like a, she has a big, um, announcement at the end, at the end of, um, this story. So, uh, take it away. Well, thank you for having me. So, um, yeah, my name is Barb Zablotny. Um, and I ended up, um, acquiring a T10 incomplete anterior cord syndrome spinal cord injury um, in a car accident. I hit, um, obviously I'm in Pennsylvania, so we have bad weather. Um, mm -hmm. I hit a patch of black ice. I was not wearing my seatbelt. So everyone listening, make sure you wear your seatbelts. Um, and as a result, um, I was thrown into the back seat of my vehicle and I was paralyzed on impact. Um, and, you know, I had a very hard time accepting the fact that I just got paralyzed at the age of 21. Um, you know, it was, I had to give up my life. Like I was living hour, like four hours away from my family. I had my own apartment that was on the third floor. I had to give up my apartment. I had to give up, um, finishing my degree. I only had a five week internship till I could graduate. And I was, now I understand I was discriminated against. Um, and that's why I couldn't have it, but, wow. oh, I can't say that. Yeah, you can. can. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. You were yeah. Like, no, no, I'm, I'm shaking my head because that's awful. And it's like, and then to not even, you know, at the at that point, it's also new. You don't even realize that you're being discriminated yeah. against. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I had no clue until actually about four or five years ago is when it dawned on me that I was actually discriminated against. Because you don't, like, let's be honest, you don't get disabled and then someone hands you a book going, these are all the laws. You now know them. Like, <laughs> overnight. Like, don't know that. Right? right. So, um, you know, I was discriminated against and I, as a result, did not get my associate degree. Um, I'm still very, um, upset by that every mm. day. It still just really bothers me. Um, but you know, there was really nothing I could do after, you know, 14 years have passed now. Right. Um, so after that, um, I also had a really, I got sent to a rehab hospital that really, now that I know more as well, didn't really understand how to deal with a spinal cord injury patient 100%, um, you know, which is kind of crazy because Pennsylvania actually has two center of excellence spinal cord injury rehabs. Wow. And I was sent to either one of them. I fell through the crack. So I'm still like also confused by that. <laughs> um, and you know, um, so I did not have a good experience there. So then um, my mom suddenly died in her sleep, uh, not even a year after my injury. So my mom, you know, ended up being my caregiver, essentially, when this all happened to me as I'm transitioning, moving back home, going through therapy. Of course, I'm like, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna walk. You know? right. I was in that whole mode that most people are with a new injury. And so she was kind of taking care of me at the time. And, you know, she d suddenly died in her sleep. And at that point, I was like, oh my gosh, like, what's the worst that can happen now? Like, this is this is too much. And I always say that I feel like my mom dying at that point was probably harder on me than my actual injury. Yeah. Um, 
And then not even a, well, it was about a year after that, um, my ex fiance and I separated. And obviously during that time, he was like a major, you know, rock and support system to me. And so by the age of 23, I lost these mm -hmm. things that are big, like losing one of them, you know, at that age is a big deal, yeah. but losing them all at once like that, it just compiled. And I got, I went through a very hard period of depression and, um, I didn't really realize I was depressed, right? Like that was the crazy part. I just was living day to day, just trying to get through. Um, and in this depression, I ended up gaining a hundred pounds of extra weight. Um, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I went through discomfort and anyone who knows me knows I love my sweets. Um, mm -hmm. and so, Plus know, Pennsylvania, I... I didn't realize like they make a lot of really good stuff. Barb brought a bunch of chocolate to nationals. And then, yeah, I probably gained five pounds just hanging out with her. Yeah. I was like, God, that's made in Pennsylvania too. I guess Hershey's. And then there's more though. Oh, oh yeah. also remember you brought your chips. <laughs> so I bring Zaps potato chips, which is originally cl clearly was made in Louisiana. They were Louisiana themed chips, right? And they were first made in Louisiana. And then and she, everybody loved them and Barb and her sister loved them. And I think, was it you found some in Pennsylvania and she flips the bag over and they were made in like, Pennsylvania. in Pennsylvania. And I was like, well, that sucks. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I was like, add it to the snack collection here, you know, so snack you know, capital of the world. That's right. Exactly. So obviously it was very easy to gain a hundred pounds of what we're getting at here. Yes. Um, here. So like, not to mention I wasn't properly fitted in a right wheelchair and I had all these kind of things going against me, which made me not want to sit in my wheelchair, which made me not want to be active, which made me just chill in bed. And that kind of compounded into the gaining of weight. Mm -hmm. um, so I struggled with like, like, you know, bowel and bladder issues and um, the doctor I spoke to, you know, in a more polite way, but long story short was like, you know, you're too fat. Um, we can't do these surgeries to help make your life better. You have to lose weight. And I'm like, how am I going to do that? Like people with legs at work can't do that. And mm -hmm. so um, they set me up with a food addiction counselor. They set me up with um, a dietitian. And I started going to the gym with a trainer and like, I literally just started out with band exercises and, um, you know, over the course of, I think it was like two and a half years or three years or something. Um, I ended up losing a hundred pounds and, um, it was halfway through that, that I realized how depressed I was. I was like, Oh, this is how normal people feel. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, okay. And so, um, you know, that was kind of where I was at. And then a family friend of mine told me about this thing called Miss Wheelchair Pennsylvania because the national organization was hosting in Pennsylvania that year in 2017. And my predecessor was actually going to compete. And that a little tiny thing, like the size of my thumb was in the paper. She handed it to me and was like, you should do this. And I was like, I am not a pageant girl. I'm covered in tattoos. Like, no, thank <laughs> gut was telling me to do it. And I've learned to listen to my gut. Um, when it comes to things now, I've learned a hard way in life, not listening to it. Yeah. So I decided to look further into it. I realized why my gut was telling me to do it. And I was like, you know what, what's, what am I, what am I going to lose? I'll meet some cool people. It's not like I'm going to win, but <laughs> I'll maybe meet some friends. Right. And I ended up competing and I ended up winning the title March of 2018. And, um, I, that was the beginning of my life. I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, was winning that title. Um, I never talked to really anyone else in a wheelchair. I kind of kept to myself. I'm in rural Pennsylvania. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, the camaraderie that the organization brought me, I think was what I needed most. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like Karen said, we met at Miss Wheelchair America and, you know, we, we, we were like, you know, friends instantly. And then we had, we had to do a scavenger hunt oh my <laughs> and God. we were in the same group yes. and her and I were trying so hard to keep a smile on our face and be good sports. But we like both like could tell in our eyes that we were like annoyed at like all the crazy things that they had us do. Yeah, it was we were really like, hot. why are we going down this like yeah. hill? And it was mm -hmm. hot. And like my sister was like walking with us. Her watch said we went over four or five miles that day. 
like we were like, like we're, 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 for power chair users it was all good right like no big deal for us we were like oh my goodness like hot it was really hot um, and the carpeting in the oh hotel gosh. was super thick too so like by the end of the week like my arms were killing me mm -hmm. from all the pushing yeah. there but it was you know a tough it week. was yeah, I mean, it was obviously worth it all looking yeah, back, yeah. but, you know, that was, um, I ended up taking home the People's Choice Award, yeah, and, you know, as... we all know Karen won the <laughs> grand title. Year, yeah, and then we, <laughs> we pretty much, like, that was a really busy year for me, but um, I stayed in touch with Barb probably weekly, and then, at least, and then um, we did a four-state little trip together, which we have some video of we can share, and um, and then, so I really feel like, Although Barb had started doing advocacy work, you know, prior to the competition, because that's how you compete is based off of your mm -hmm. history of advocacy, your, your advocacy career kind of took off after that. And you, um, were started a, your own chapter of United Spinal Association for your area in Pennsylvania. Um, you're the state coordinator for the Pennsylvania program that happened after, um, and I became the state coordinator for the Louisiana program, which, but so, um, mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. And um it is. It, it is. is yeah. But it's so worth it. Um every day I'm like, why am I doing this? But when I see the women and what they gain from it, I know I'm it's worth it all in the long run because the women I I, I you know, we mentor with Miss Wheelchair Pennsylvania through the ambassador program. I even see them just making small personal like growth mm -hmm. and you know, small little things and it's like adding up to them doing like amazing things. And, you know, I know like you and Madonna and Janice always like say, you know, we're not going to be around forever. We have to make sure we mentor mm -hmm. who comes after us. And that's kind of what I always try to remember is like, I'm not going to be here forever. They are going to be there in the future. Like yeah. we have to mentor them. Like we're all in this together. Yeah. And sometimes and, you'll meet people that they're interested and they think it's a pageant and they don't realize it's an advocacy competition. And some of them aren't quite there in their journey yet, but as soon as they learn about it and they realize what the competition is all about, that motivates them to start to become, um, um, to become advocates, to start their advocacy journey. And, and some of them are really depressed and in that place where you were early on and they're, they're looking to find their community and their niche and that kind of thing. So, um, that's what Barb and I found. Bob and I aren't like, neither one of us were like competitive athletes. Like, you know, that wasn't our thing. So that there's a lot of opportunities for people with disabilities to hook up in that way, in that realm. But, you know, um, programs like Miss Wheelchair America, appeal to another part of the disability community and that's how, and then you find your sisterhood and that kind of thing. So, so I feel the, like there was always something missing, like that. I couldn't like everything adaptive that I was told about, like, didn't fit with me. And I even didn't feel like this pageant fit with me. Mm -hmm. And then when I realized it was advocacy yeah. based. And, oh, I said um, when hell freezes over, I will roll around, roll around with a tiara on my head. <laughs> Those were pretty much my exact words for many years. They're like, don't you want to, I was like, no, no, I don't want to do that. And then, and then I was like, the further I got into advocacy, I was like, wow, like people listen to you when you have a sparkly object yes. on your head. Don't know it's why bizarre. it is. Even if you don't have the sparkly object and you just wear your sash. I know. I it's, found that like it's gets magical. attention. Like, it's magical. Yeah, I'm like, this is really a bizarre thing. But if you're going <laughs> to listen to me because of what you interpret to be this something important, important mm -hmm. then I'm going to use that. And while I may kind of like, when you really digest it, I'm like, this is kind of offensive, right? right. You know yeah. what? I'm going to get my word in and, and that's, that's that. I'm just going to go off of it. Like, I don't. This is that, why Barb and I became really good friends because like that, like that is, that was my exact thought process through the whole thing. Cause I'm not a pageant girl either. I was yeah, 50 that's... when I won. Five zero. <laughs> if this were beauty contest, I've said many times, you don't wait till you're 50 to do it. Um, yeah, they so. don't. And they, I mean, of course, like everyone's like, oh, you're so pretty. Of course yeah. you'd win. And every time yeah. like they'd say that around Karen, and I, we're like, thank you. But um, that's not what we want. Yeah. So and then we ex we yeah, then we didn't have to explain. Yeah. And like, that's when you get your like platform message out there too. You know, like I went yep. with the platform changing ignorance with education and inclusion. Mm -hmm. And I kind of feel like that's still kind of what I work towards every day still. Yep. You know, I still kind of strive for that. Yeah. So, and I'm still it, talking about getting approval for standing and yep. especially right now, standing in seat elevation and power wheelchairs is a big push. We're trying to get CMS to, to cover those things. And um, yeah, so 
the and other positive <clears throat> thing is that you know from these um friendships and stuff that you get at this you know event you also learn things like that from your fellow you know will sisters if you will about their platforms so then you can remember that and help kind of advocate along the way and educate as well so um you know i learned a lot about you know seed elevation and all that stuff from karen i didn't know how much a pressure wound costed to heal until she you know rattled mm -hmm. it off like what yeah. was it again What's the i mean it, it, well the the numbers that you if you look up and i don't believe them honestly because the the data that i found was like sixty thousand, but we both know that a lot of times that might be the first hospitalization but not the second or the yeah. third or the home health or the the wound vac and then the flap surgery one flap surgery is probably easily a hundred thousand dollars Oh, um, for sure. Yeah. Um, it's, it's well over a hundred grand. Yeah. So it definitely is, you yeah. know, I never thought of those things until Karen, you know, you know, kind of told her platform and I was like, wow. Yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah. We all, and, and, and our passions haven't changed. And I think that's why, um, we continued on with that journey of advocacy and, and have done lots of things since then. Um, so, and I think, so Barb starts, Barb is, she is like a go-getter. She, when she researches something, she, she can figure out how to do anything that she puts her mind to doing it. It amazes me. It always has uh, very organized. Um, and she pulls people together. She pulls good teams of people together and she's running several programs and it's amazing. And so, well, so I think that's good. So we kind of, our first half was really about, you know, finding your niche and finding, um, an advocacy and things like that. So as Barb's journey moved on, um, we, we decided we also kind of wanted to make this about, um, making disability more visible in the mainstream, mainstream media, advertising, um, um, movies, um, modeling magazines, whatever. So, you know, for a long time and gosh, when you think about like people with, um, wheelchair users and other people with disabilities were literally hidden, hidden in people's homes, put in, you know, institutions and basically not fit for, um, they didn't, people didn't want to see them in the public. Right. And unless, unless you were perfect, perfect, um, you, you should be hidden away. And so we've had to like fight all this bias and discrimination. And so things have come, come a long way, but still when Barb and I read a magazine, when we watch TV, when we watch a movie or we go into a store, we don't see very many people that look like us. I mean, they may have like the one or two here or there, but so, um, Barb, I want you to tell your most recent story cause it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, so I, I was just shopping at a store called Torrid, which is, um, for plus size women. And, you know, I am six foot tall and I'm just built big. You know, I, I lost a hundred pounds, but I'm still plus size and I'm always going to be, mm -hmm. um, and I, there's nothing wrong with that. You no, know, right. I think that's the first thing we need to put out there is that not everyone is going to be, you know, a certain size either, because I feel like within the disability community, I really kind of feel like there's this standard that you have to be a certain way or you don't fit in or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, the people who do get that visibility, if you will, in the community, they always fit this, you know, certain mm -hmm. stereotype. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so that was kind of something ultra skinny or very, and there's uh, nothing wrong with no, that nothing, either. No, you're right. Right. I yeah. don't want to shame them. That's nothing like that, but you know, if you're going to show representation for this body type, you need to show representation for all for body other types. Body yeah. And also another thing is people are like, oh, that's promoting unhealthy lifestyles. Well, you know, not really. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying to, you know, it, it, you can be healthy and also be plus size. Right. Like, I mean, there's a difference between morbidly obese, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit overweight or, you know, right. and I think that's, where in the community there's that kind of weird, um, that weird space. Mm -hmm. And so I, 
I think that there it, it's a fine line. It really is. Mm -hmm. But you know, because obviously, if you're 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 too big, you can't you know get through doorways because your chair Tra yeah. takes up the transfers room. are and, probably difficult. That yeah. Kind of thing. Oh yeah. Like whenever I was a hundred pounds heavier, I couldn't transfer easily. I couldn't my I couldn't fit in my chair. Mm -hmm. I couldn't I couldn't live a life, mm -hmm. and it was so hard. And so you can't calf. You can't do things that you need to do to survive. Mm -hmm. And so it was something that like for sure it it was detrimental you know but again i lost this weight and i'm still at this size yeah, you're six so, feet tall yeah you're yeah yeah so <laughs> like i'm just built big and uh, it's fine and so um i shopped at tord i i always have um i was going there since i was like you know in 2003 um when it was a plus size hot topic now it's not that anymore yeah. but that's what it started out as and so um, I went in there and, um, you know, I was sitting at the register and I realized that there was like an accessible like sign there. And I'm like looking at the other side of the register. I'm like, why is it accessible over here? But not over like, it's the same height. Like <laughs> yeah. what's going on? And so I was like, can I just ask a weird question? And they're like, sure. And so I'm like, why is this side accessible? But this one's not. And they're like, we're not sure. Hold on. Let me ask the manager. So the manager came and she's like, oh, because the key, the credit card keypad comes off. Mm. And so this leads way to us talking a little bit more about things. And so she was, you know, talking about how the company like, you know, taught them this stuff and the ways that they're kind of accessible. And I was like, you know, that's really great for me to hear. And I love that. But my next question to you is how come I don't see someone in a, sitting in a wheelchair up on these walls? Mm -hmm. And she was like, actually, there is a virtual casting call for us coming up. And I'm like, are you serious? She's like, yeah, keep an eye out. And I'm like, okay. So like maybe a week or two later, I got an email, it popped up and you know, I saw what they needed. I went and got the headshots taken from a friend of mine who does headshots. I I saw that they needed a video. And so I, I have video editing skills and, you know, I was like, I know exactly what I'm going to do. So I wrote up the script. I spent, I spent like a whole weekend doing this video, mm -hmm. this adventure video. I had my sister take, you know, the other pictures they needed and um, I submitted it. And then I ended up making their semi-finalist um, out of like someone in a group said that there was over 10,000 applications. I don't know if that's true uh -huh. or not, but that's what I, someone said. And so um, I was one person selected from that many applications and I was the only visible disability mm -hmm. shown there. And um, I was like, oh, wow. And so it was open then to the public to vote and I went into all the disability groups I'm in, and I just, I did not leave it alone. No. I worked my, my social media I management. was exhausted watching the stuff and, yeah. I, and knowing what it takes to do a photo shoot. I mean, any kind of, even if you just mm -hmm. have one photographer, you go to like one location, maybe, or maybe if you change outfits, but I, I saw the outfits, I saw the locations. I mean, first of all, anytime Barb throws herself into something, it's going to be 110%. And I, <laughs> I watched her do this campaign and she did, she, she engaged the entire disability community and, and all these connections that she's made through Miss Wheelchair America and United Smile and all of these other groups. Um, she worked it and, uh, it was a beautiful thing it to was, watch. It was super exhausting. You're not wrong about that. Like I literally, they, they gave us a shopping spree. Um, at the store. So um, a personalized shopping spree. So like I was able to get these outfits and the whole point of that was to model the outfits and then, you know, use that as social mm -hmm. media content. And, you know, my, my thought process was, okay, if I don't make the top 10, then I'm going to still educate along the way. So most of my posts were about disability education, bringing visibility to disability was my hashtag. I was also using the hashtag representation matters. And I really pushed that, mm -hmm. you know, things like the bumps on sidewalks, people don't even know what those are for. Yeah. And I, you know, educated that that's for people who are blind or, you know, low vision. And I just, you know, everything I could do as much as I could with the photo shoots and what was around me. I try to bring that visibility to the disability community to the best of my ability. If I didn't win, you know, I still did the best yeah. that I could to represent our community. Yeah. So you did a great job. And, um, oh, so we were, um, I just, I was so busy today with work that I didn't really get a chance to share. So since we've been talking, I've like 
shared some of the posts and I want to share them again. So, um, so I kind of felt like, I mean, I mean, Barb worked your campaign in, in, a, in a way that, I mean, I don't think a lot of people could. They, they also, I guess maybe that's, that's one of the silver linings of being, there's many, but being part of the disability community, like, you know, we rally around our own, right? And so every day you were like getting people to vote and share it with other people and vote, vote, vote. So um, I am thrilled to announce that she found out, Barb found out like, like was it yesterday or day before? Uh, it was like um, on Sunday. So yeah. Um, and this will be put out in about a week from now. But um, so that she made the top 10. So she's, she's so now going to be a torrid model um, going to I, a photo will, shoot in LA, right? Yeah, I will be going to LA to shoot for their holiday campaign. Um, I'm assuming it'll probably be like released sometime in November or something. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know to the extent of, you know, what what is all involved yet, quite yet. Um, but I guess they are having um, the actress Nicole um, Byers as mm -hmm. our like modeling coach or something. Okay. Um, and so that's going to be super cool. But like, you know, to kind of go back to that, like, you know, you don't see the representation that we need. And like, it, it's funny, I was watching TV and a commercial came on, I think it was for Discover, don't quote me. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I was watching it and it was like focused on it, like an able-bodied person talking, but in the background was a crowd and in the background, a girl in a wheelchair went by just like, yeah. you know, and I was like, oh my gosh, an actual crowd. <laughs> right. It's like you watch movies, you see like, you know, Iron Man blowing up New York City, right. or whatever. you see all these things happening in crowds and never is a wheelchair user in the background. Never do you see, you know, anyone with a disability in the background. And that is so unbelievably unrealistic. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, even before I had a disability and used the wheelchair, every time I was in a crowd, there was someone with, you know, a disability mm -hmm. or used the wheelchair in these crowds. Like, why are, well, why are they yeah. not showing this? I mean, every single dis, every, every, every single, um, wheelchair accessible parking spot is taken up yep. for, across America. So if, where is everybody <laughs> like being represented? Well, exactly. Yeah. And, and now, granted, we all know, we rampant, all know that yeah, there's a rampant amount of abuse happening. Right. Right. That's a whole other topic for another day. But yeah, um, like so, um, so I guess, um, I kind of, we, we talked about a little bit of a list before the, before the show. So, I mean, Zappos how always has had, several lines and done several ad campaigns with people with all different sorts of disabilities. So wheelchair users and amputees and um, people with Down syndrome and just all you name it. And they kind of tried to, to do that. And Tommy Hilfinger had a line of clothing that was all for people with disabilities, easier to get off and on that kind of thing. Um, Airy. And, and then there's a bunch of other companies too. Yeah, there's like Aerie. Um, they did a whole entire campaign with a bunch of people with varying di different types of disabilities, um, you know, colostomy bags and, you know, amputees and wheelchair users and stuff. Um, they had also adoptive clothes for that, um, you know, and then there's Intimately, which is um, for, you know, lingerie. You can find or, that on Instagram, right? And, yep, you know. it was intimately, and then there's like Slick Chick Online, which um, the underwear actually is detachable on the side to make it easier for people to, you know, get off and on or, mm -hmm. or cap or whatever, um, change if you have an accident, um, you know, yeah. so it, we're getting more mainstream, like, I feel like people are starting to, companies and people are starting to see that the representation really does matter, and, um, you know, I, a number was thrown out there. Um, that we have like over three hundred and billion dollars in spending power, mm -hmm. and I think companies are realizing that yeah. and they want in on that action. Yeah, and it's and not just you know like because there's a lot of people that. that like may not be permanently paralyzed or have a disease process, you know, like some of our friends do. But you know, people who I mean, the elderly or people with dementia or you know, there's there's a lot of people who might need clothes that fasten and unfasten easier than what, you know, just these normal underwear that we've been fighting with for, you know, for me anyway, for 33 <laughs> years. Um, so, um, I mean, it's, it's nice to be recognized in the mainstream. So I guess we're about to kind of wrap it up. I want it like, 
I kind of like to end things with, you know, we've come a long way and we've kind of given a shout out to the companies that are doing the right thing, like Torrid. And I'm so excited for Barb. I still, I still haven't done half my social media sharing that I need to do. Cause I just, um, I'm just, I'm so proud of you. Um, and then, and then I, I think that it's just really amazing to look at where you came from to where you are. And I know your mom would be so proud of you. Oh, thank you. Um, I wish you were here. <laughs> oh no, me too. Um, so what can people, what do you, what's your advice to people who, I mean, how do we increase the representation, representation of people with disabilities in mainstream media? So, you know, the first thing I'm going to say is like, reach out to these companies and tell them that you want to be represented and seen because these companies are saying, oh, well, we don't hear anything. Don't wait for them to come to you then. Exactly. Like people just assume someone else is doing it. Oh, Barb's going to do it. So why should I do it? <laughs> well, the more people who do it, the better it is. Like if they get like, say you want Victoria's Secret to be, you know, having accessible clothing, you need to be messaging them like all the time and get your other disabled friends to message them and start demanding it and saying it that you want re represented and you want that because if they don't have a lot of people like reaching out to them, they don't know that it's in demand a hundred percent other than a couple big, you know, right. maybe influencers saying something publicly here and there, right. but it, the, the powers in numbers. And so that would be my first thing. Um, and then the second thing is, is, you know, when you see these contests, like, you know, toward had on, I know like, there, I mean, I, I mean, I just think of my life and I'm like, I, I'm always winning these contests. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, to even find out about it, like you were in the right place at the right time and you brought up disability yes. related issues and you brought it up or you would never have found out. Well, well, yeah. And I think a lot of people, you know, I, a couple of people that like we personally know reached out to me and they were like, I saw that Tord was doing that contest and like it, I thought about doing it, but I was too nervous. I wasn't at a place. I didn't think I could do it. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just glad that you did it, you know? And I think, you know, you can't always just don't let your insecurities overtake you. Don't let fear overtake you because, you know, applying for something like that, what was the worst that was going to happen to me? I got told no and didn't hear back. <laughs> Like, yeah. or what's the best that could happen? Okay, I get become a semifinalist and I get a shopping spree and maybe I don't win the top 10, but right. hey, you know, I got a shopping spree. So, right. you know, like, so why not take that chance? Mm. You know, why not put yourself out there? Because if you don't put yourself out there, you know, nothing, you know, that is, you have to be the change that you want to see in this world. Yeah. And if you don't want, if you don't try to be the change you want to see in this world, it's never going to change. You know, you can't just rely on someone else is going to do it all the time. Yeah. Sometimes it's going to have to be you. And, you know, I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't want it to, you know, I'm insecure, blah, blah, blah. blah. I don't want it to be all about me. And, you know, I get that because I had a really hard time with that at first, but I realized, you know, that it's not necessarily about me. I'm just the face yeah. of the message I'm delivering I mean, yeah. or the representation. And, you know, for it's two not... girls who were not, you know, into beauty mm -hmm. competitions or would never like that, we're very, we're very different, but we we were the same in the fact that that would never be something that we would have done, but we did it for the right reason because we, we were like, you know what? I have the energy right now to, to advocate it. I have a message that I think is important. You kind of put yourself out there. So, um, but anyway, I people just need to put themselves out there and I, and not just rely on someone else to go and do it. Um, because you don't know what doors that's going to open for you. And, you know, putting myself out there for Miss Wheelchair Pennsylvania opened so many doors. And, you know, I, when we were talking before this, I honestly have to be honest, like if I didn't have that Miss Wheelchair Pennsylvania experience and everything that came after, I don't know if I would have had the, the, ability in myself to go and do our the confidence has both grown our confidence has yeah. grown yeah absolutely I, I don't know if i would have you know and then i of course i wouldn't have had the video footage i used for the submission right video. and, then she's, and she's yeah she's taught herself all this stuff well we're um we're at the end of our episode and um Barb, I, you know how much I love you. Um, I can't wait to see, like, we're just at the beginning of this. So we're just a couple of days in for her finding out that she's in the top 10 and she's doing this campaign. Things are going to be blowing up for her. We're going to revisit this in a future episode. Yeah. Um, like kind of a little, a little bit, bit. They already are.
Yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. I mean, honestly, the weirdest, I mean, again, this is something that wheelchair users will understand. My biggest concern is right now flying to LA and my wheelchair getting damaged before I get there. Yeah. That's my biggest concern. Yeah. Um, as long as I get there, my wheelchair's fine. I'm fine. You know, getting home, if my wheelchair gets damaged, I right. feel a little bit better, but I want my wheelchair for LA. Right. We both okay. work for two different wheelchair companies, so we kind of, you know, yes. she, hopefully she can get it repaired quickly. All right. Well, I, um, I love you. I can't wait to see where this goes and we'll see you on the next episode. Who is that real quick before we go? Oh, this is my Petunia. She was actually the cat with me when I wrecked my car. Aww. She's getting a little bit old. So she came cause she wants to eat. Oh, uh, sweet girl. She's on me about wanting to eat, so. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you on the next episode, Barb. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah.